I've taken hundreds of flights and plan to take hundreds more over my lifetime. So you better believe I was a little concerned to see the number of negative effects that flying has on the human body. And if you are a frequent flyer, you might be interested to learn that the effects of flying range from fascinating to uncomfortable to downright scary, especially the last few on this list. Let's start with an interesting one. Flying is going to change the way that you taste food. Many travelers complain about airplane food being bland, but interestingly enough, it might not be the food, but instead are taste buds that end up duller when flying. Air pressure changes during a flight reduce the sensation of taste by up to 30%. And there are a few reasons why this change to the way that you taste is not going to do your body any favors. You'll likely get less satisfaction from the food, which can lead to overeating in an attempt to satisfy your food cravings. Airplane food is often also loaded with excess salt and sugar to try to combat passengers' loss of taste. So in short, you might be tempted to overeat food that has far more calories, sodium, and additives that you normally would be eating on the ground. Just like our taste buds, our brains are also going to be affected by the altitude. Another common side effect of being airborne for long periods of time is fatigue. Although aircraft cabins are kept at pressures to mimic air between 6,000 and 8,000 feet, that's still going to be much higher than the average living altitude, which may cause travelers to experience headaches, brain fog, and just an overall feeling of sleepiness. Gases also expand at higher altitude, including the gases in our stomach. Bloating is an uncomfortable and very common side effect of flying, especially if you drink carbonated beverages, as those air bubbles also expand and further contribute to bloating. The changes in altitude and pressure are also to blame for the ear pain that many travelers experience on takeoff and landing. During a plane's ascent or descent, the ear pressure in the cabin changes, but the pressure in the middle ear may not adjust quickly enough, causing a pressure imbalance. This can lead to discomfort, pain, or even just an unsettling feeling of fullness in the ears. The good news is that these effects are just going to be temporary, which unfortunately is not the case for all of the effects that I'm going to include on this list. Let us know down in the comments if any of this information changes your mind on whether or not you will fly. The next effect that flying has on your body is that it can dehydrate you. The low humidity inside an airplane leads to dry cabin air, which will dehydrate your body and dry out your skin, mouth, nose, and even eyes. Dehydration also causes bad breath because when you're dehydrated, your body doesn't produce enough saliva. Without saliva to clean out debris, bacteria have a chance to grow, which is then going to cause bad breath. Even worse than a dry mouth is a dry nose. When the cabin air dries up mucous membranes, it increases the risk of contracting infections. And as if this doesn't sound bad enough, Constipation is another symptom of a dehydrated body and fairly common with flying and travel in general. This next one can have a lasting effect on our bodies even long after the flight has ended. Unfortunately, flying is going to weaken our immune systems. A flight that involves crossing multiple time zones is certain to confuse your body and disrupt your circadian rhythm. We know this as jet lag, which happens when your body's internal clock gets confused when you cross multiple time zones quickly. Jet lag can make you feel tired, disoriented, and even nauseous. Furthermore, it can lead to sleepless nights on arrival at your destination, which not only can ruin your trip, but also weaken your immune system and make you more prone to getting sick. The science says that we need roughly one day for every hour of time zone we cross. So that means that after a six hour transatlantic flight, we would need around six days for our cycles to be fully resynchronized with the local time. Even if you are one of those few lucky people that doesn't get affected by jet lag, just the stress associated with travel, such as rushing to catch a flight, dealing with delays, and flight anxiety can also impact your immune function and make you more susceptible to catching a bug. Flying is also going to make it more likely for you to get sick just because you are exposed to so many new viruses. So not only are you more susceptible to catching a bug due to your weakened immune state and your dry nose, flying also puts you in an environment where you are in close proximity to others, including others who are sick. You'll also be breathing partially recirculated air and you are surrounded by high-touch surfaces such as the tray table, 
armrests, seat belts, and those lavatory handles. Long flights also put you at a greater risk of developing blood clots. Long periods of sitting can lead to muscle and joint stiffness, and even swollen feet since circulation is impacted. This can be a little embarrassing, and it might make it harder to move around once you land, but the much more serious risk of less than optimal circulation is the scary risk of deep vein thrombosis. Say that three times fast. DVT is a rare condition where blood clots form in the deep veins as a consequence of sitting for a long period of time in a confined place. In severe cases, DVT can result in a pulmonary embolism where a part of the blood clot breaks off and travels to the lungs. That is quite scary to think about, but it's not one that gets me too freaked out since I know how rare it is to end up with DVT. The one that does freak me out is the exposure to radiation from flying. This is where things get freaky. Flying exposes passengers to both ultraviolet radiation and cosmic radiation. We are all familiar with ultraviolet radiation from the sun, which is also known as UV radiation, which is what we are protecting ourselves against when we wear sunscreen and hats. UV ray exposure that we get from being in the sun or from a tanning bed is considered to be the primary cause of skin cancer. One study measuring UV radiation in the pilot seat of an airplane found that flying for under one hour at 30,000 feet had the same UV carcinogenic radiation exposure as a 20-minute tanning bed session. I'll link to the study in the description for you to check out yourself, since I am not a doctor or a scientist, I am just a YouTuber that found this to be quite interesting, especially since I and many of my friends would never use a tanning bed due to the UV risks, but when it comes to flying, I've never even thought twice about the risk of radiation. The other type of radiation that flying exposes us to, also one that I know nothing about apart from research, is cosmic radiation. Higher altitudes mean increased exposure to cosmic radiation, which is a high energy radiation that is apparently filtered by the time it reaches Earth, but not so much when you are in the sky. Hopefully you find this information to be more fascinating than it is depressing, and I would love to know down in the comments if any of it makes you think twice about being a frequent flyer. I'll personally keep flying, at least as long as the benefits of travel continue to outweigh the risks. Thanks so much for watching, my name's Megan and I would love to see you subscribe to join us back here for more travel tips and hacks next week. Bye!